What's up Guardians, Profane here, thanks for checking out the video. I know we're a little late to the party on this one, but today I'm going to be covering how to easily acquire the Heart Shadows Exotic Catalyst and how to quickly masterwork this amazing new exotic sword. I would have gotten this video out to you all a lot sooner, but sadly it has taken me the course of the last 6 weeks to finally get the Heart Shadow Sword to drop. With that being said, I'll be breaking down each step to make it super easy for anyone to get and unlock the Heart Shadows Catalyst. Before we get started, if you enjoy today's video and find it helpful, then please be sure to help support the channel below by hitting that like button along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated. Now once you have pleased the RNG gods enough to get the Heart Shadow to drop, you'll have to head back into the Duality Dungeon to acquire its Catalyst. There are three steps in getting the Catalyst, and all three steps will need to be completed in the same run. For those wondering, you do not need to be on the same character that you got the Heart Shadow on to get the Catalyst. To complete these three objectives, you'll have to transport Standard Essences from one location to another which will involve a fair amount of jumping and maneuvering. And it is because of this that you want to prepare yourself before attempting any of these. Hunters will want to have stompies at the ready with triple jump, while warlocks and titans will want to maximize their mobility as much as possible and use lift and balanced gliding. Warlocks will also want to utilize heat rises, some will even want to consider using Daybreak to make some of the needed jumps that much easier. Swords will definitely be needed. The first of the three essences will be found in the opening area of the dungeon. You'll first want to reach the very top of this room at the point in which you can shoot the bell to teleport to the red realm. Once teleported, look to the right and up against the far wall you'll find here your first essence being guarded by the Nightmare of Canuck, who will be hiding in this small hidden corridor. These bosses are fairly tanky, so don't feel bad wasting your super on them. Once you've defeated the Nightmare of Canuck, you'll now have a 28 second timer for the Nightmare collapsing. At this point, you will have 28 seconds to escape this room and deposit the essence, which is located behind the bell in this realm. If your time runs out before depositing, you will wipe. This is where warlocks will need to utilize heat rises, and hunters will definitely need stompies. Once you deposit the essence, the timer will stop, and the essence will now be locked in place. The first objective is now complete. Now, you will need to head to the first boss encounter of the duality dungeon. The next objective will be found once the encounter is over in the Ever Downward. Once arriving to the Ever Downward, you will need to activate both levers located on the top right platform and the bottom left platform. Once these levers are both activated, the Nightmare of Rigor will spawn in on the far side. If you are in a team, it's important that whoever picks up this essence does not die at any point going forward while holding on to the essence. Your journey with this essence will be long, so you will need to be flawless in your ability to reach the vault without dying. It will be in the nightmare realm of the vault that you will deposit this essence. There won't be a timer though, so you can take as much time as you need.
Now that you've reached the vault, you'll need to chime the bell to teleport to the Nightmare Realm. From here, you'll need to jump across to the adjacent platform where you'll find the location to deposit this essence. Once deposited, you'll need to unlock the vault as normal and then proceed to the second boss encounter. The second objective is now locked in place. Once you've completed the second encounter of the dungeon, your third and final essence will be located in the depths. This essence is located in the same place as the Callous Memory, for those that may be familiar and have already completed that. This final essence will be guarded by another beefy nightmare, and just as you had to do with the first essence, you'll need to rush back to the bell, but unlike the first essence, the deposit location will not be directly behind this bell. Instead, you'll need to continue on to the next area and cross the exposed beams. Watch out for the mob of Cabal here. You're not on a timer anymore, so if you need to take extra time, then by all means, take extra time. Once you jump across the beams, you'll find your final essence deposit location right up against the wall. Once you have dunked the third and final essence, you will have a chest spawn right where you stand. This chest will contain the Heart Shadow Catalyst. At this point, you can leave the dungeon. Your next objective will be to defeat 400 enemies with the Heart Shadow. In doing so, you will fully masterwork the Heart Shadow and unlock the perk called Wraith Walk, which grants faster movement while invisible. Wraith Walk plays off the Heart Shadow's intrinsic perk called Exhumation, which turns you invisible on heavy attacks and launches void projectiles. Heart Shadow also comes with a perk called Shot in the Dark, which increases the damage of Heart Shadow for remaining invisible longer, and it gives the Heart Shadow the ability to weaken targets when striking while Shot in the Dark is active, which Shot in the Dark is only going to be active while you're invisible because of Exhumation. The Wraith Walk ability will not work if you holster the Heart Shadow. Now this does come with a 4 second cooldown as well, so you can't spam this ability. In addition, the tracking on the Void Projectiles is extremely inconsistent, and since they cost 3 rounds of ammo to blast, the Heart Shadow can quickly run out of ammo. While getting a boost to your invis speed is nice, I feel like it really isn't a worthy enough perk to justify this much effort for a featured dungeon exotic. Maybe adding a return ammo ability or just increase ammo reserves would make this catalyst more relevant and I would feel better about having to go through all the effort in getting it. To reach 400 sword kills quickly, try equipping sword ammo finder and reserves. Buy a few stacks of raid banners and head over to the Shuro Chi encounter of the Last Wish raid. This way you can quickly knock out around 80 plus kills with the Heart Shadow, wipe and pop a banner to refill sword ammo, then rinse and repeat. After a few runs, you'll be done. For those wondering if you get credit for empty sword kills, the answer is no. You will need to have sword ammo for those kills to count, so you're probably going to have to rely on banners and heavy ammo crates. I couldn't find any confirmation on whether you receive bonus credit for guardian kills, but it's honestly just more efficient to use one of the aforementioned sources. Otherwise, hitting up Altar of Sorrows or farming public events will be ideal locations to quickly complete these 400 kills with the Heart Shadow Sword. And with that, we've come to the conclusion of acquiring and unlocking the Heart Shadow Exotic Catalyst. I'd love to hear what your thoughts on this new exotic sword are, so let me know in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If so, then please be sure to help support the channel below by hitting the like button along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated and really do help support the channel. If you have any further questions about getting the Heart Shadow Exotic Sword or its catalyst, then let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any additional tips to help out your fellow Guardians, then let us know those in the comments as well. Until next time Guardians, this has been Profane, wishing you some happy hunting.